Now, let me start off this video first by saying that I feel bad for Seth Rollins. I really do. It's a really bad break, or in this case, tear, what happened to him. Tearing his MCL, tearing his ACL, meaning he's going to be out of action for close to a year. Just as he is at the top of the WWE food chain, he is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. In many ways, he is the current face of the company. That's a raw deal. So, you know, I feel bad for him. I feel bad for his fans in a way, too, because here's a guy that you've liked for years, a guy that's paid his dues, a guy that you were behind, you always believed in, but you never maybe believed fully in the fact that the WWE would ever take him to the levels uh, that which they did. You never thought they would fully get behind him, and that's understandable. So it's obviously heartbreaking to see somebody that's worked so hard for so many years to achieve their dream actually start to realize that dream, only to have it cruelly yanked away from them. All because of one freaking spot and one freaking moment in time. That's a, that's a raw deal. So I really, really do feel bad for Seth Rollins and his fans. And especially Seth Rollins. And hopefully he understands that day one after the injury begins day one of the recovery. And personally, I look forward to seeing him back in a WWE ring again. You know, it's where he belongs. It's what he does and what he does quite well. You know, so it is a raw deal. However, with that said, I know I can't be the only one that thinks this. And I know I'm not the only one that thought this. I don't know if I'm the only one that's actually verbalizing this and talking about this. I don't really know. But frankly, when Seth Rollins hurt his knee and I found out about it and found out he was going to be out for an extended length of time and found out they were going to strip him of the title, my first reaction was yes. My second reaction was thank God. My third reaction was, it's about time. To me, my opinion is that while it's a raw deal for Seth Rollins and his fans, his knee injury is probably the best thing that could have happened for the company and, frankly, for the product. I really think it's a blessing in disguise. I really do. I know that's cruel to say, but tough shit. It's a cruel world, and sometimes cruel things have to happen. And this is just one of those cruel twists of fate, you know, where his knee got all twisted up and torn up. And the WWE could be better off for it. Look, you know, Seth Rollins was a guy that this company, I give him credit for, they kind of got behind in 2015. They had him cash in the money in the bank at WrestleMania 31. He walks out of that show the champion. They stuck with him. And they kept him champion all year long. They didn't just give him a one-month or two-month transitional title reign to hand it to the next phase. They didn't just sit there and instantly forget about him. They consistently featured him like he was somewhat a big part, an important part of the show. I mean, they threw people at him like John Cena and Sting and Brock Lesnar. I mean, you don't just do that. You were starting to tease him splitting off and doing a feud with Triple H. I mean, while they didn't do a very good job of it always, sure, because it's the WWE and what the hell do they really do right today? And at times, it was kind of unbearable to watch with him as the champion because it came across very dull and very boring and very bland. That's also true. The company at least believed in him and got behind him. And he wasn't the same type of muscle guy that you always think the WWE is going to want to push to the moon. And in some ways, for some of you, Seth Rollins' title reign, I believe, in a certain way, while albeit in a different direction, done in a different way, was a representation of what you never got to see out of Daniel Bryan post-WrestleMania 30 as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. That's kind of the way I look at it. So you were starting to live vicariously... Uh, for Daniel Bryan through Seth Rollins, and you felt like you were winning one over on the WWE. You have no Daniel Bryan. You have no CM Punk. They're kind of toiling away with Dean Ambrose and other guys that you really, really like. So who the fuck else you got? Well, at least Seth Rollins is the damn world champion. Well, let me put it to you this way. Seth Rollins is a boring-ass fucking world champion. Now, you can blame the writing. You can blame the creative direction, and all that is true. At the end of the day, though, at some point in time, even if the direction isn't good and even if the writing isn't good, the character still has to get over, and the performer has to overcome. And at times, I don't think Seth Rollins did a good enough job of overcoming. Because, frankly, I don't think he was worthy of the type of spot that he had, especially for the length of time that he had, in the way that he freaking had. A lot of different factors combining to make a very meaningless, mediocre world title reign. And as we get throughout this title reign... I don't really feel like he ever really got any payoff to Seth Rollins being the champion outside of him winning the strap at WrestleMania 31 in the fashion that he did. There was no real payoff after that fact. 
And you had gotten to the point with Seth Rollins now that he had had the belt for so long, and they really hadn't done a lot of good things with him. Now if somebody actually beat him for the title, I didn't really think there was going to be a whole lot of payoff there. And in a lot of ways, Seth Rollins' title reign that he had is so eerily reminiscent of the entire WWE product of the modern day, and that it largely feels like a waste of time. A lot of things that are done make absolutely no sense. There's a lot of immediate changes in directions, a lot of resorting to the bad habits of the same old, same old shit, and ultimately, nothing happens, nothing changes, there are no consequences, there's no payoff. It feels like a waste of fucking time, and I'm sorry. Seth Rollins' almost eight-month run, eight run with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship was largely a waste of fucking time. And it got to the point where I started to believe that Seth Rollins was a member of the Breakfast Club because even in the face of all logic saying, hey, his championship reign, not that good, especially from a box office standpoint, but more particularly, especially you would say from a television rating standpoint because as Monday Night Football started, predictably the ratings for WWE declined even more than they are already declining to begin with during Seth Rollins' title reign, and they really nosedived once Monday Night Football started. How long are you going to stay with this asshole? How long, much longer are you going to go against the grain and realize that he's not the answer? It was almost to the point where he was getting the Randy Orton, John Cena, Triple H type of treatment that whether you like it or not, this is what they were going to fucking do. To where you've always had that belief that Vince McMahon would rather you cheer the people or boo the people he wants you to cheer or boo as opposed to obviously you doing what you want to do as a fan. And that leads to the dumb hijacking of shows and all this other dumb shit. It's a representation of the resentment towards Vince and the way that he treats his audience. It's ridiculous. But it got to that point with Seth Rollins. He was not a good world champion. The product was not good. And if we could talk about how not good the product is with John Cena as the champion or Randy Orton as the champion or whoever the else, fuck else is the champion, and they're boring the brakes off of us and you can see the entire product mirrors it as a result. Now how is it any different with Seth Rollins? I know a lot of you are Seth Rollins fans, but how many of you have really tuned out WWE over the past few months more than you already had? How many of you have stopped watching Raw on a consistent basis? At some point in time, there has to at least be a small amount of the blame laid at the lap of Seth Rollins as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Not all of it, no. So many other problems outside of him, but he deserves a portion of the blame too, and the company does because at the end of the day, his title reign fucking sucked, and it was largely a waste of freaking time. At least now with his injury, we don't have to waste any more time with this title reign. We don't have to waste time building up to a match where he drops the strap or Sheamus cashes in and there's absolutely no fucking payoff. Now, you get something that actually matters. You have a tournament that gives Raw for the next few weeks some type of purpose, some type of meaning, building up to a show in Survivor Series that's supposed to have some type of importance, and it really does now because you're going to be wanting to see, you at least have some curiosity as to who's going to be the next WWE World Heavyweight Champion and where the company's going to go with this. Whereas opposed to if Seth Rollins was the champion heading into Survivor Series and he just faced off of Roman Reigns, a lot of you would have that, oh my God, Reigns is going to win the fucking title because he's going to be so much worse than Seth Rollins, right? That there would be no curiosity. There would be no interest or intrigue whatsoever. At least now there's interest. At least now there's intrigue. The only bad thing about this from the company standpoint, in my opinion, is not that a guy that they've invested almost an entire year of trying to pound him down your throat as the top guy when he clearly wasn't ready for that spot, and they weren't ready for him, more importantly, they would just kind of throw him out there, but they never really fully got behind him. They kind of half-ass got behind him. The only bad thing about this and the timing of it is that it didn't happen after TLC before the Royal Rumble. Imagine if Seth Rollins had to vacate the belt before the Royal Rumble. And then you could throw 30 fucking people. You want to do 40 fucking people on that one, fine, because this is for the big prize. This is for the world type. You could throw every motherfucker in the book into that one. Fuck these young scrubs like Tyler Breeze. They ain't never going to do shit anyway. You could throw Austin in there. You could throw The Rock in there. Triple H in there. Taker in there. You could throw Lesnar in that motherfucker. You could do all types of different shit. Imagine the intrigue and possibilities heading into that Rumble show and, frankly, heading into WrestleMania 32 in Dallas where this company is trying to set an attendance record at the same time UFC setting their lousy attendance record in Australia outdoors and, what is it, like 70,000-plus people? The WWE could come back a few months later and say, hey, motherfuckers, we put 110,000 into the ATT Stadium, the shrine to Jerry Jones' fucking ego and child abuse or women abusers, excuse me, like Greg Hardy. That's the only bad thing about this. Does that it happen two months too early? Again, I know it's cruel, and you're going to think I'm an ass. I don't give a fuck. It's a cruel fucking world. 
Imagine how much more interesting this would be if you really didn't know where the hell this company was going with the belt heading into the Royal Rumble, and you were going to have a similar like you had in 92 where you had everybody wrestling for the freaking title. At this point in time, that's kind of the direction I wish they would freaking go. I wish they would use Raw over the next two months to establish a hierarchy and establish some type of tournament to get people into that Royal Rumble freaking begin with. Give us two months of consequential Raws, since all you're giving us is fucking matches anyways. You might as well make those matches actually mean something. Building up to your real beginning to the road to WrestleMania, 30 people in the fucking Royal Rumble, they've all, for the most part, earned their freaking spots. And now you have at it, and who's going to be the freaking WWE World Heavyweight Champion? We might think we know, but nobody ultimately fucking knows. I mean, yeah, I know a lot of people aren't looking forward to this because they automatically think that this company is going to instantly go down the Roman Reigns path at Survivor Series, and I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case. I also do know that one thing I dread about this is that at the end of the day, I think they're going to come up with a lame-ass decision and a lame-ass choice for what they do with that belt come Survivor Series, and, that, and that's a problem too. They're going to move from one waste of time in Seth Rollins' lengthy, drawn-out, boring-ass title reign to giving you another one, whether that's a Sheamus or Roman Reigns or whoever the fuck else it is. But at least there's some type of spice here. At least there's some type of interest in entry. I'm sorry, man, but Seth Rollins' title reign fucking sucked, and it's time to accept it. It's time to acknowledge it. And if anything else, again, pissing some more people off, I'm tired of the same types of fucking people being the only type of people that ever get any type of love from the fucking internet audience. And yes, there is a clear difference between the internet audience and some of the other segments of wrestling fan bases. It's fucking true. Start accepting it. I'm tired of these fucking small shirts being prostituted out there as real deal legit WWE World Heavyweight Champions. I should be able to look at the WWE World Heavyweight Champion and be able to think I could go three minutes with them in a fucking fight. I didn't say anything about kicking their ass. I didn't say anything about even looking good. Eventually, they'll probably pound the bricks off of me. But do you really think I'd be intimidated by a CM Punk or a Daniel Bryan or a fucking Seth Rollins? Get the fuck out of here. At least I can say you look at a John Cena and he looks badass, even though he's kind of dopey and fuck. At least I can sit there and look at a Roman Reigns and be like, my God, he might actually really kick the shit out of me. I most certainly believe that he's a badass. I look at Brock Lesnar. What more do I need to say? I know he's a fucking badass. Take her whoever the fuck else. This is a good thing. I think even in the last couple of weeks, the Raw Reeks went up a little bit. You know, it speaks to the whole disconnect between what the hardcore fans want and what is actually sometimes good for business, in particular television ratings. They're not the same. And maybe this is another example of proving that point. Look, I don't know what the company's going to do with their next world champion. I don't even know if I care enough to even really care. I will talk in my next video about what I would do at Survivor Series and who I think should be the next WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But at this moment, again, I feel bad for Seth Rollins. I wish him the best. I hope that his rehab goes well and that he comes back and he's dominating the mid-card in a year. But I'm glad he's not the fucking world champion anymore. And I know that I'm not the only one that feels that way. And I know that the WWE at the end of the day probably really f understands that this was really a blessing in disguise. And for a product standpoint, an on-air standpoint, I couldn't agree fucking more because it is.